Good morning, One Hope Church. It's Derek here. It's been an adventurous week. So welcome to One Hope Church Online. We're currently in the lobby. So uh, grab yourself some coffee, your Bible, a pen, and get ready for our Sunday service. We're gonna have a three minute countdown in a second. So get your devices ready, sling it to your television. Say hi or comment below. Make sure you like, thumbs up, and share today. Good morning, One Hope Church. We're so excited you've joined us. I hope everyone is safe, doing well, and staying connected. My name is Derek. I'm the heart and soul coordinator here at One Hope Church. I want to share a few announcements with you before we jump into worship and service this morning. Hey, if you're a first time with us this morning, if you're joining us for the first time, we love to connect. Normally, I say hi in person, but we're inviting you to text HELLO to 863-777-5639. And if uh, you're watching, let us know that too. Drop a comment or emoji on Facebook or YouTube. Say hi in the chat on the Church Online platform. We have a host and uh, others there to welcome you and interact with you this morning. So make sure you, uh, you've liked our page and you're following the church on Facebook, Instagram, and you're subscribed to YouTube. We love to keep you informed of what's happening at the church all through those platforms. Next, uh, at One Hope, we usually check in on social media and we do that with a purpose and uh, you know, we get a chance to partner with some really cool, incredible organizations. And this month, we've partnered with Souls for Souls. Every 10 check-ins actually provide a pair of shoes to someone in need. So um, whether you choose to check in before service, after service, just make sure to use the hashtag give shoes. And this morning, we're, we want you to uh, post a picture of your family while you're watching service today. Tell everyone you're watching online. Um, we also wanna share with you how you can worship through giving this morning. So uh, go to onehopechurch.org give 
or text One Hope Church to 77977. Or you can mail your check in to the church's address below. Um, we really want to thank you for your generosity and giving. And we realize that some of you have asked how you can help others during this critical time. We set up a hope fund to provide additional support as we partner with some organizations such as Convoy of Hope. They're feeding and supplying affected families all over the country. And we have a local partner, One More Child. We actually had the chance to partner with them and support during Love Week with diapers. They're supplying essential items to single moms and foster care families in Polk County. Indicate your giving type when you contribute. We love and appreciate you all. Worship's beginning. Let's get in there. And I encourage you not to be a spectator today. Let's engage with what God is doing and serve. Sing along, comment, and let's lean into God this morning.
this place. I worship you. I worship you. Cause you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Cause you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here. Touching every heart, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lies up. is a miracle worker. He is in the business of taking the impossible and making it possible. Jesus is a promise keeper. 
for all the promises of God find their yes in him. Lord, this morning we stand on your promises, that you are for us and not against us. You have made a way for a relationship with you when uh, we have caused separation. And we find that you work all things, all things for our good, for those who love you. Lord, as we continue into your word, Lord, would you be with Pastor David and open our hearts, open our ears so that we might have an ear to hear. Lord, we pray all these things in your holy, precious name. Amen. Good morning, One Hope Church. Let's welcome Pastor David as he comes and brings uh, today's message. Hey, welcome to One Hope Church again. I'm Pastor David, and uh, today we are continuing our series called Strong and Brave. Uh, hey, if you've got your Bible at home, go grab that. Uh, you can download uh, the One Hope Church app on one of your devices or maybe the YouVersion Bible app. Uh, we've got notes available there for you to follow along. And Hey, this series that uh, we're sharing uh, called Strong and Brave, it came out of a, a scripture that my wife Michelle read when we were uh, getting online, we were sharing the decision that we were making to transition One Hope from meeting uh, in person uh, at the theater uh, and changing over to that digital online platform like today. And uh, she read this verse, and, and, and I want to read it to you right now. It comes from Psalm 138, verse 3 from the New International Reader's Version. And it says this, When I called out to you, you answered me. You made me strong and brave. And those words, strong and brave, they stuck with me that day. And actually, I haven't been able to get them out of my head or out of my heart uh, that, that God is calling us to be strong and brave. And in a time of crisis and a time of fear and worry, you may not feel strong and brave today, but I want to speak to you right here, right at the beginning of this message, and let you know that God uh, wants you to know that when you call out to Him, first and foremost, He hears us. Hey, come on, that's good news, somebody. God hears our prayers. He's not absent from our world situation, and he's not absent from your situation either. His word says that his response to us in these times is that he wants to make us strong and brave. Well, let me just recap a little bit from last week. We were reading from Psalm 138, and I said, hey, we just won't live in verse 3. We'll go back and we'll read the whole chapter, verses 1 to 8. And we found uh, some hope and some encouragement for our lives from God's Word. And we focused on verse 3, but then uh, we also uh, highlighted verse 8. And, and that verse says, uh, Lord, your faithful love continues forever. You have done so much for us. So don't stop now. I love that uh, uh, phrase. You've done so much for us. And we asked last week during the message for you to share some of the things that God has done for you. And so as we are recapping here for a moment, I want to actually share some of those stories that people dropped in, their comments and, and uh, uh, things that they dropped in and sent to us to encourage your faith and to build your faith today. We said, hey, what has God done for you? And Rowana wrote, he has given me hope and strength and everlasting love. I love that. Janet wrote in and she put, he has been my provider, my protector, my comforter, Thank you, Jesus. I think we can all say that. You know, thank you, Jesus, that you've done that. Helen wrote in and, and, and said, God has answered my prayers. Uh, Faith wrote, God worked out our move to Florida. Man, I, I love that, that God is so good and his promises are so faithful that he works in our lives, even our everyday things. Like when we're making transitions and we're moving, we're kind of a little uncertain, but God has m already mapped all that out for us. Uh, April wrote, God has been faithful with his promises. And one more, Annie wrote in and she said, God always provides for us. Come on, somebody. That's encouraging to me. And, and, and you know, God, you've done so much for us. Don't stop now. And we asked you to make that your prayer. And I hope you've prayed that this week. God, you've done so much for us. You've done so much for me, so don't stop now. 
See the news reports, they may be worse this week, but now is not the time to stop trusting. Now is not the time to stop believing. Now is not the time to stop praying, and it's not the time to stop hoping. God has done so much for us, so don't stop now. Hey, today we want to continue this thought of living our lives strong and brave. And I want to take us back. We read last week in the book of Joshua, uh, we, we read about that first battle that the people of Israel faced under Joshua's leadership, that, that walled city of Jericho. But I want us to go back to the beginning of this book and, and take you to Joshua chapter 1. So you got your Bible, you can pull out Joshua chapter 1. And while you're doing that, let me give you just a little bit of the backstory, the context of the verses that we're about to read. See, the people of Israel had been in slavery in Egypt, but God had used Moses to help deliver them. And as they moved out of Egypt, heading towards what God had uh, promised them, that promised land, uh, they found themselves in a place of disobedience. And as they disobeyed God, uh, the result came was that they wandered around the desert for 40 years until a new generation could grow up and make the choice to follow God. God had been with Moses, uh, and, 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 and now Joshua was Moses' servant. He was his right-hand man. He was, he was the leader under Moses. And, and as Moses passes away, God makes Joshua the new leader. And, and the people uh, and Joshua are faced with this new reality filled with uncertainty, anxiety, and doubts. They're crossing over the river and, and heading into this promised land. And, and they know that there's going to be battles ahead. They know the reality is life is uncertain. They're not sure what's going to happen next. But uh, I love that God gives some great direction to Joshua. And I think the words that God speaks to Joshua can speak to our hearts this morning. So we're going to read from Joshua chapter 1. Uh, we're just going to camp out in verse 6 to 9 this morning. And uh, we're going to take some points right out of this passage today. And I love it because in the NIRV it says these same words, strong and brave. So let's read together Joshua 1 beginning in verse 6. Be strong and brave. You will lead these people. This is God's word to Joshua. They will take the land as their very own. It is the land I promised to give their people of, of long ago. Be strong and very brave. Make sure you obey the whole law of my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn away from it to the right or to the left. Then you will have success everywhere you go. Verse 8 says, never stop reading this book of the law. Day and night, you must think about what it says. Make, make sure you do everything written in it. Then things will go well with you. You'll have great success. Here's what I'm commanding you to do. Be strong and brave. Do not be afraid. Do not lose hope. I am the Lord your God. I will be with you everywhere you go. Hey, did you hear with me uh, how many times Joshua was told that phrase, be strong and brave in these four verses? Joshua is in uncharted territory like uh, pretty much all of us right now. He was facing a new reality for his life. And there's no doubt he was feeling worried and maybe a little bit of anxiousness and, and maybe uh, some fear. Fear had come into his heart uh, of what was ahead of him and, and, and what was ahead of the people that were depending on him. Come on, anybody been there this week? You kind of have a little bit of anxiousness and, 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 and maybe worry, a little anxiety about uh, what, what's happening around us and, and maybe how, how you're going to handle it and how the people that depend on you are going to handle it. Let me tell you that there's a remedy to that worry and that fear. It's the same remedy that God gave to Joshua all those years ago. That in the middle of hardship, in the middle of worry, in the middle of anxiety, we can make a choice. We can choose to live strong and brave. And so the question is, how do we do that? I mean, uh, I want to take the next few moments to share with you how to live strong and brave in some troubled times. And, and it comes right out of this passage. And so the first one is this. we got to stay the course. 
In Joshua chapter 1, verse 7, it says, Be strong and very brave. Make sure you obey the whole law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn away from it to the right or to the left. Then you will have success everywhere you go. I think God is saying to Joshua, hey, you know what to do. Stay the course. Uh, do what Moses had instructed you to do. Don't, don't try to figure things out on your own. Trust the law. Trust God's word. And don't tr- turn to the left and don't turn to the right, but stay the course. I don't know about you, but man, I am probably one of the world's worst at using a GPS. And of course, it's got a little bit better when it's on our phones now instead of that little Garmin box we used to stick in our car. But too many times uh, I punch in the address and the instructions start coming to me and, and, and it says, hey, go this way. And I think, what? You want me to go this way? I mean, uh, that can't be right. I don't think that's right. Sometimes I'll even tell Michelle, like, I don't think this is right. And, and the voice says, not Michelle's voice, uh, it says, in 100 feet, continue straight. And I'm like, no, I think, I think I'm supposed to turn here. And so I turn. And in that GPS voice, again, not Michelle's voice, uh, it says, in 50 feet, make a U-turn, you know. And I'm like, "Uh, not happening. I'm not making a turn. And then it says, make a U-turn. I'm like, not going to do it. And and then the voice says, recalculating. (laughs) And more times than not, you know, my path uh, either ends uh, up getting me lost or taking me so much longer to arrive than uh, I really was scheduled to be uh, to my destination because I didn't listen and I didn't stay the course. And I want to tell you this morning, God says, obey the whole law. Don't turn to the right or to the left. In other words, stay the course. Now let me talk to you uh, believers for just a moment. If you love Jesus, you're following him, this is for you right now. Uh, If you're a follower of Jesus, I'm telling you, it's time to stay the course. Hey, it's not time to jump ship right now. Uh, uh, Don't don't give up on God right now in the middle of this crisis, in the middle of this storm, because we need Him the most right now. It's time to stay the course. Uh, The same God that served you before COVID-19 is still here, and He's still ready to help you and to help you get through this. God's Word is our guide. But you know, in the New Testament, Jesus said that God would send us uh, a comforter, an advocate, the, the, the Holy Spirit that would be with us. Matter of fact, in John 14, 26, uh, it says, But when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, He will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. You know what, if we want to live strong and brave in troubled times, uh, I think the first thing is we got to learn how to stay the course. And here's the second thing. we got to learn how to feed our faith. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8 uh, says, Never stop reading this book of the law. Day and night you must think about what it says. Make sure you do everything written in it. Then things will go well with you. And you'll have great success. Can I tell you, we got to learn how to feed our faith rather than feeding our fear. Now, I'm I'm not suggesting that you shouldn't keep up with what's happening in our world. Uh, By no means am I suggesting that you bury your head in the sand and pretend like everything is okay. But maybe I'm suggesting to you this morning that maybe a a, a steady diet of 24-7 cable news uh, might be the source of uh, stirring up anxiety and worry and maybe even some fear or depression in your life. So we've got to make sure we're careful uh, about what we're choosing to feed our lives. God told Joshua, never stop reading the book of the law. In other words, uh, don't stop reading the Bible. Don't stop diving into God's Word. You know, Psalm 119, verse 105 says that your Word is a lamp that shows me the way. It's, it, it's like a light that guides me. You know what? God's Word is full of promises that are faithful and true, and they bring light and hope and help 
in troubled times. So maybe this could be our interactive moment for just a, a moment here in this message. Uh, uh, so I want you to take a second right now. Uh, post in the comments in this moment a scripture that's encouraging you during these uncertain times. Now, hey, you don't have to type the whole thing out. You can just maybe type the address, tell us where it is, uh, give us a few words that are encouraging you from scripture, and just take a second. Go ahead and do that right now. Uh, what verse is inspiring you? What verse uh, is, is it that you're praying over your life and your family right now? Uh, what's the verse that you're declaring in your life right now? Uh, what's the verse that you're writing on your bathroom mirror to remind you of God's faithful promises? Uh, I know some of you might, might like writing on your bathroom mirror. Hey, let me tell you about us for a minute. Uh, about three and a half years ago, uh, Michelle and Dominic and I, we started One Hope Church. and uh, but, but let me take you back a little before that. For about a year and a half, God had been working in our hearts and our lives, kind of preparing us for what He was leading us to do. And during that time, we had been praying about what God uh, wanted us to do as far as life and ministry and and uh, we were looking to scriptures for guidance we were praying and uh, I had met with uh, my uh, pastor I call him my pastor now Pastor Ron Johnson from One Church in Orlando they were instrumental in helping us start One Hope Church and and when I met with him one day he was sharing a verse of scripture with me uh, that stuck and I'm going to tell you, we prayed that verse, we memorized that verse, we uh, stood on the promises of that verse, we cried over that verse, and Michelle literally wrote that verse all over our house. Uh, she had it written on our bathroom mirror, uh, and, and, and at the time there, we had like a little step-in shower at our house. And you had the glass door that you would step through. And then there were three tile walls, one with a shower head and then the other two. And Michelle wrote this verse on all three of those walls in that shower. So every morning when I got up to get ready, I couldn't get away from that verse. I mean, if I look this way at the shower head, there it was. If I turned this way, if I turned around to grab the soap or whatever, there it was hitting me in the face. We had it on the mirror in the bathroom. And I couldn't get away from that verse. I bet what some of y'all are wondering what that verse is right now. Hey, tune in next Sunday and I'll be glad to share it with you. No, not really. <laughs> Let me share it with you right now. It comes uh, from the book of Job. And uh, maybe you haven't cracked open the book of Job. There's some good things in there. Uh, and it comes from Job chapter 8. Verses 5 to 7. I'm going to read it to you from the NIV because that's one of the versions that we had up on the wall for us. And it says this, But if you will seek God earnestly and plead with the Almighty, if you're pure and upright, even now He will rouse Himself on your behalf and restore you to your prosperous state. Your beginnings will seem humble, so prosperous will your future be. Come on, somebody. That was a good word for us back then, and it's a good word for us today. And, of course, you know I've been reading out of the NIRV because, I mean, that's like Michelle's go-to version these days. And so, uh, hey, you know we got to read it out of there as well. Job chapter 8, verses 5 to 7 from the New International Reader's Version. But seek God with all your heart. Make your appeal to the Mighty One. Be pure and honest, and He will rise up and help you now. He'll give you everything you had before. In the past, things went well for you or with you, but in days to come, things will get even better. Can I tell you this morning, we got to seek God with all our hearts. we got to feed our faith, and when you do that, He's going to rise up and he's going to help you. In the past, things have been going well for you. But I want to tell you, you if you feed your uh, life with things that are negative and, and things that are uh, disappointing and, and fearful and worry, man, you're going to have that perspective on life. But I want to tell you, if you will feed your faith in the days to come, you will believe and know without a doubt that God is with you and things are going to get even better. 
So what are you feeding yourself right now? Hey, well, you got a granola bar this morning. You got a Pop-Tart. I mean, maybe that's what you're thinking about. But, but I'm asking, what are you feeding your soul? Is it fear? Is it worry? Is it anxiety? We got to feed our faith with the promises of God's Word. Psalm 43 verse 5 says, Why, my soul, are you downcast? It's kind of like David's giving himself a pinch. Get a wake-up call. Why are you so downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will praise, uh, I will yet praise Him, my Savior and my God. Hey, how do we live strong and brave in these troubled times? First thing we shared is that we got to stay the course. Secondly, we got to feed our faith. And finally, this morning, we got to trust in God's faithfulness. Let's go back to Joshua 1. We're going to read verse 9. Here's what I'm commanding you to do. Be strong and brave. Do not be afraid. Do not lose hope. I am the Lord your God. I will be with you everywhere you go. God says again to Joshua, hey, don't be afraid. Don't lose hope. Can I challenge you to hear that same word for your life today? Guys, don't be afraid. Hey, Dad, don't, don't lose hope. Mom, don't give in to fear. Uh, tr trust in the faithfulness of our God. I don't know about you, but sometimes I have to like literally preach to myself. Uh, maybe you need to learn how to do that too. So you're like, hey, I'm not a preacher. Maybe you need to learn how to preach to yourself. We got to reflect on God's promises. We got to remind ourselves sometimes of his faithfulness. And, and the best way to do that is to get into his word. Let me share just a couple of the promises of God found in his word. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13 says, Even if we are not faithful, he remains faithful. He must be true to himself. See, God is a faithful God. And so even when we fail, even when we falter, he won't falter. He won't fail because he is a faithful God. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3 says, But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you. He will guard you from the evil one. I love that. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Let us hold firmly to the hope we claim to have. Can I tell you this morning, people are, 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 are looking at your Facebook feed. <laughs> Uh, they're looking at your social media posts right now, your Instagram posts. And, and, and the God that you have claimed to serve all of these times, they're looking to see if you're still trusting in Him. And I'm not saying this to like heap any kind of condemnation or any, anything on you, but I want to tell you the same God that you trusted before this crisis is the same God who's going to get you through. So you've got to learn how to preach to yourself this week. And just tell yourself, hey, my God is faithful. I can trust in him. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to lose hope because God is with me. God wants you to be strong and brave. But he's not asking you to be the one to carry the weight. See, the reason that we can be strong and brave is not because of something that you can do. It's not because you're good enough or obedient enough or following enough of the, the scriptures. It's all because of God and who he is. And if you have a relationship with him, you can know that God is with you no matter what you're facing. In the environment that we live in right now, saying be strong and brave, some of you are like, oh, pastor, how can you even tell me to do that? I, I don't know how to be strong and brave right now. And I know for some of you, if I say, be strong and brave, it's kind of like asking you to, to, to take some spaghetti noodles and, and to stand them up on end by themselves. Like, man, just stand, stand a spaghetti noodle right on top of your table right now. This is not the uh, broom challenge or anything like that. But like, hey, is, is it even possible to stand a piece of spaghetti up by itself? I mean, even straight out of the box when it hasn't been put into the, the boiling water, dry pasta does not have the ability to stand up on its own. 
I mean, you can cheer it on all you want. Like, hey, you can do this pasta. You can do it. Uh, or I believe in you. But by itself, man, that, 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 that pasta is never going to stand. But let a master chef step in to the picture and everything changes. The pasta and, and his uh, hand, in the hand of the chef, the pasta is easily held upright and is secure in his grip. If I can challenge you with one thing today, it's this. The call to be strong and brave is not about how much you try. It's all about one thing. It's about knowing that God is with you. He's with you this morning. He's with you today. He's going to be with you tomorrow. To know that God is with you and He is holding you firmly and securely in the grip of His grace. I want to pray for you today. Will you join me in prayer? Jesus, I thank you for this day. Thank you that we can call out to you in prayer and that you, you hear us. Lord, I thank you that we have uh, not only that assurance that you hear us, but we have this assurance that you're not unaware of the issues and the problems and the things that are facing our lives today. God, we believe that you love us and you care for us. And you care for every need that we have and everything that we're going through. You're concerned about it. And so I'm thankful today, not only that you hear our prayers, that, but that you stand ready to answer them as well. Lord, I pray today that you would help us to be strong and brave. God, help us to stay the course. Help us to, to feed our faith. And, and Lord, I pray that we would be able to trust the faithfulness of a faithful God. Lord, I pray that you would help us to know today that it's not about our ability. It's not about what we can do or how hard we try. But it's about how strong and brave we can be when you are with us and you are holding us securely and firmly in the grip of your grace. Lord, I pray specifically today for those that are watching today that, that need a touch from you. Lord, I, I, I pray, Lord, across uh, uh, this, this uh, uh, message, Lord, that, that people that are, are fighting this COVID-19 virus, I pray that you would touch them and bring healing, bring strength, Lord, bring, bring health. Lord, I pray that you would uh, stop the spread of this virus, Lord. I pray that people would be ministered to with strength and the power of your healing touch. Lord, I pray for those that are on the front lines serving in our communities and across our nation and across this world that are doctors and nurses and health care workers. Lord, for those that are our first responders. Lord, those that are literally caring for those that are having this virus right now. God, would you strengthen them? Would you hold them in your firm grip? Give them the, the power to continue on. Give them the help to continue on. Give them the, the strength that they need. Lord, I pray for our leaders God, our local community leaders, our, our state leaders, and our national leaders. Lord Jesus, would you give them the wisdom that they need to make the right decisions to help guide us through this critical time. I just thank you for that. Thank you that you're at work in our lives. And I pray all that in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, in this last moment that we're together, maybe you'd say, Pastor David, I hear you talking about being strong and brave. I, I hear you talking about the faithfulness of, of God, but I've never experienced that for myself. I don't really know God for myself. I've heard about Him. I've known people that say they know God, but I've never really put my hope firmly and securely in Him alone. You know, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, uh, that God is faithful and fair. 
And if we confess our sins, He will forgive our sins. He'll forgive every wrong thing that we have done, and He will make us pure. Today, if you're watching and you need the forgiveness of God in your life, if you need to take that step of faith and put your hope and your trust in, in Jesus, I want to tell you that you can pray today and that you can have an assurance in your heart that God is with you. You can have this assurance of faith and know that God is going to carry you through these troubled times. I just want to pray for you. Maybe if you're here and you're watching right now and you want to commit your life to Christ, or maybe you've known Jesus, but today you just need to make a fresh commitment to Him. I want to pray with you right now. You can just pray with me this prayer. You can pray it out loud. You can pray it in your heart. But the Bible says this, if, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, He will rescue you and He will save you. So just pray this with me right now. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for my sin. Please forgive me. Come live inside of me and make me new. I receive your love. I receive your salvation. I give you my life. I make you my Lord, my Savior, and my soon coming King. Thank you for the hope that I have in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, come on, I want you right in your house. Let's celebrate because there are people that are making that decision right now to follow Jesus. And hey, if you're at home and you made that uh, commitment, you prayed that prayer with me, uh, can I tell you that we love you and we want to support you and help you? You can do a couple things right now. Uh, in making that commitment. You can uh, comment right now uh, on the Facebook feed or uh, if you're on the Church Online platform, you can comment in the chat or you can even ask for or prayer uh, there in, in the uh, online platform. And, and, and you can comment, I'm committing my life to Christ. Or you can comment, I am recommitting my life to Christ today. Or if you don't want to put it in the comments right now, you can text right now to us uh, the word hope, text hope to 863-777-5639. The number's coming up right here on your screen. Hey, we want to just send you a couple of texts this week. We want to uh, shoot you a couple of emails, a couple of messages, just to encourage you in this decision that you're making. We love you. We're praying for you. Can I tell you today that uh, I know there's a lot of people that are in a, in, in a position of need. And uh, we want you to know that we're praying for you. Hey, we're doing prayer times all across uh, our uh, uh, social media throughout the week. But if you have a, a, a prayer need and you want to uh, request prayer, you can email us at prayer at onehopechurch.org. And also, um, we, w we want you to know that we're standing ready. I know Derek mentioned earlier that you can give to our Hope Fund uh, online and uh, we encourage you if you're in a position right now where maybe you got a little extra and you have a heart of compassion for others you can give uh, to that hope fund and we're going to help make a difference we're partnering with some larger or organizations uh, both nationally and locally but I want to also tell you that um, if there are specific needs in our church we want to respond to them too and so uh, if you have a need you can reach out to to us or you can email us at care at onehopechurch.org. Well, hey, we love you guys. There's going to be a couple of announcements scroll for just maybe like the next minute or two as we wrap up today. But um, we always want to close with a blessing. And so if you want a little blessing, you can put your hands out like this. But if you want a big blessing, we encourage you to stretch out your arms. And we pray that the Lord would bless you. The Lord would keep you. That His face would shine on you and he would show you his favor and his peace to your life today hey we love you god bless you grace and peace to your house is our prayer to you today have a wonderful week